What's good, everybody? Seek No Seek back with another video today. I'm with my boy Quaymax. <laughs> 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 We're back with another video today. We glad three true first date horror stories animated. These are gonna be spooky. These are gonna be scary. You gonna be scared? Oh no. Oh no. All right, I might be scared later on tonight though when I gotta walk down the hallway and it's dark and the light not working. Um, you had a flashlight or something. Bro, they ain't got no batteries. It's always bad luck for me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you gonna jump into it, man. Hopefully, y'all enjoy it. Link description down below to my cousin Quay Max channel. Definitely check him out. We got some fire. <laughs> In the video, you can see a woman trying to escape a man who followed her to her apartment. She was only seconds away from getting inside when the man Ooh. ran toward her at full speed, trying to catch her. The following animation is loosely based on this scary footage. She got in at the perfect this time. This happened in 2008 what? when I was working in a department store. Being a young female employee, I often had to face creeps at work. Weird men would hit on me and make sly comments whenever they approached my counter. I was used to people like this after a point and gradually built up my comebacks to get rid of such men. It was a Wednesday oh. afternoon. Nah. I was working like usual when I felt someone was watching me. As I lifted my eyes to look around, I saw a guy staring at me from the corner shop. Vampire though. Right, man, looking like a vampire, a whole vampire, man. I think them fangs. Yeah, yeah, poking out the mouth. That's just weird. You over there doing, you cashier and somebody just standing beside the drinks just staring at you. Like, that's weird. That's weird. Elves. His eyes were so big that it kind of made me cringe. Still, I kept calm and concentrated on my work. The guy kept roaming around the store aimlessly and looked at me every five seconds. Slowly, he walked toward me and I was ready to insult the hell out of him. He smiled awkwardly and said, Um, sorry if I made you uncomfortable. I didn't expect him to apologize like that, so I fumbled. Oh, n no, no, it's fine. I just thought, uh, well, I, I, don't, I don't know what I thought. I, a, a pretty girl like you would never agree to go with a loser like me, so, uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm rambling. I, but it's true, you, you are pretty. <laughs> uh, I bet you already thought, knew, you already knew that, though. Now I couldn't help but blush and also laugh at the same time, seeing him struggling like a teenager. <laughs> uh, at least I made you laugh. <laughs> we both chuckled. He said his name was Damien, and he worked at the local garage. I won't deny that his awkward proposal felt kind of refreshing. I also felt bad for mistaking him for a creep, so we went for coffee during my lunch break. I didn't even think he can go outside in the daylight. Right, I'm surprised he didn't get vaporized when he touched he touched outside. This man go on a date with, with Dracula's son? Man, is, is a abandoned son of that? I'm telling you. Nah man, listen man. If if he can make it, y'all 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 got a shot, bro. Trust me. <laughs> Trust me, bro. Talked and he seemed like a nice guy. When I noticed it was time to get back to work, I got up, saying, So it's time for me to get back to the store. I'll see you around then. Uh, my, my friends are having a party tonight. I, if you want, I, I could pick you up after work. I, I just, I, I want to I know you more, I, I guess. Saying this, he smiled and scratched his head. I blushed again and agreed. I had nothing to do that evening anyway, so going to a party seemed like a good plan. What? I went back to work and finished my shift in excitement. No it had been a long time since I had dated someone. Before leaving the store, I went to the washroom fixed my hair, and put on some lipstick to look good enough. I had just come out from the store, thinking Damien would be there any minute. As I turned around, I almost screamed in shock. Hello! <laughs> <laughs> Damien stood right behind me, as if he never left. He expanded his eyes widely and said, you Ready to go to the party? Yeah. No. Yeah, well, let's go. Change. I noticed he hadn't brought a car when I clearly remembered him saying he would pick me up. Maybe his friends were partying nearby. Yeah, he don't got a car. He's gonna mess around and turn into a bat. He's <laughs> gonna fly in that way. Man, yeah, I'm trying to see. What is going on here? So when she stepped out there, he could. Hey! <laughs> so I didn't make a fuss about it. We started walking on the sidewalk. 
It was 9 p.m., and the streets were stranded already. I asked him, So, where do you live? Uh, close by. I see. How was your day? Boring. His one-word replies seemed weird all of a sudden. He was looking around like a sneaky cat while walking with me. I didn't know why his behavior was so different. For a second, it felt like he was not the man I thought he was in the afternoon. After walking for five minutes, we took a left turn, and Damien stopped in front of a dark alley. What? Oh no. A man dressed in a white vest and tattered trousers surfaced from the alley and smiled at Damien. Seeing that man, Damien seemed nervous again, and he looked at me. Huge red flag. I was confused at the same time, which he seemed to notice. Who is this man? Uh, that's my friend. He's the one throwing the party. His condo is located inside that alley. Uh, come on, let's go. His I condo don't hear is it. inside the alley. That don't even make sense. A condo in the alley. That that don't man, that don't even work, bro. And in the way, and then it, he throwing the party, but his shirt all ripped up and dirty, his pants dirty and ripped up. Yeah, just coming out the shadow, looking like the. Yeah, that's that's just my friend. Like just just coming this little dark alley. You know, so I'll, I'll show you where the party at. Oh no. Any music coming from the alley? You sure there's a party happening inside this dingy alley? Of course I am. No, 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 stop, stop talking so much and come with us. Hearing him yell <laughs> like that for no reason, I quickly figured out something bad was about to happen. I took a few steps back, saying, Maybe some other time, Damien. I forgot I have to wake up early tomorrow. I better get going. Okay, good night. Saying this, I turned around to leave when Damien grabbed my shirt, trying to pull me toward him. Oh. I didn't realize how strong he was until he pulled my shirt and it ripped off from the back. Don't let her escape! Now, the other guy screamed, and I understood. This was all a malevolent trap. I started running for my life. Turning back, I saw Get the guy Damien, or whatever his real name was, chasing me at full speed, and the other guy was running behind him, too. My apartment was down the block, and there was no one in the area to ask for help. I couldn't call the cops because I knew if I tripped, they were going to catch me. I hope she didn't have no heels. Stop! Why are you running away? Just trust me. We're going to have so much fun, Rose. Yeah, just trust me to go while we're chasing you, trying to get you in this alley. We're going to have so much fun. Exactly. We're gonna have so much fun, knock you out unconscious. Come on, why are you running? I don't understand why you're running. Man, as soon as as soon as that he had the one word responses, I was a little suspicious. Cause before he was just talking to talking to talking. Yeah, now exactly. and like he he changed uh, to a whole different person when nightfall came. Yeah. I think it's a vampire. Yeah, that's definitely <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. And that and the dude is his ghoul, I guess. Or somebody he turned, I don't know. Something. <laughs> Something like that. Stop, I said! That witch is not going to stop you, stupid moron. You just ruined the plan. I could hear them shouting at each other while chasing me. When I reached my block, I turned around one more time and saw Damien panting on the road. He wasn't chasing me anymore. But even though he gave up, the other man didn't. He was still coming at me and was desperate to get his hands on me. I got inside my building and started to rush up the stairs. I could hear the man's heavy footsteps. I grabbed my key from my bag while going up because I didn't want to waste a single second unlocking my apartment door. As soon as I reached my apartment, it took without a lot panicking or shirt. surrendering to my fear, I calmly inserted the key and unlocked the door. The man ran like a mad horse, almost slamming on my door. But before he could get in, I got in and closed it. There we go. My breathing was heavily disoriented. Sweat was all over me, and I could feel my heart beating in my throat. Open the door! I said, open it! The man kept banging and kicking my door, trying his best to get in. Oh, no. But I knew he couldn't touch me now. I screamed from the other side. You've been caught on a CCTV camera in the hallway, prick! I'm calling the cops! Just wait and watch! Suddenly, the banging stopped, and I heard running footsteps fading away. Go. <laughs> I called the cops and reported these guys, but they were never found. I think they left the area, fearing that they would rot in jail. I carried an electric taser and pepper spray to work for almost three months. 
I just okay. couldn't take the risk after that night. Okay. It scares me to death how that guy Damien trapped me in his lies. A cold shiver rushes down my spine whenever I think about that night. No doubt those two criminals have done this before, and God knows where their previous victims are. Look crazy, bro. Do you Good. think any of them managed to escape as I did? Nah, man. At least they'll know not to mess with it again. They try to come in, come on her, man, spraying man, her down. Hey, I'm trying to tell you. Then use the taser. Facts. Both of them at the same time. Man. <laughs> and then, bro, the vampire is talking about, yeah, just, just come into this to this alleyway, this dark little alleyway. The party going. Ain't no lights, no music. Nothing. My man don't even got one of them red solo cups. <laughs> nothing. Double cup, nothing. <laughs> Like he could have came with a better life than that. Like. Girl was looking for love on a dating show in the year 1978. After choosing between three bachelors, the girl appeared to have met the man of her dreams. Don't look old. Little did she know that man was Rodney Alcala, a dangerous serial killer looking for his next victim. Here is the animated version of the actual story. I've never heard of The mind of the Maybe. psychopath is First really time. very complex. These people usually appear sympathetic, elegant, and understanding. These people do not feel empathy. They do not feel love. It's all a facade. This is not easy to identify, so their victims are manipulated by their charms, and not all of them survive to tell the tale. Today, there are tools to identify these people, but the truth is that in 1978, it was not even believed that psychopaths were real. Unbeknownst to me, Definitely I had a are. date with a psychopath hmm. that year. But not just any psychopath. My date was with Rodney Alcala. <laughs> Why they have him looking like that? <laughs> he ain't look nothing like that from the from the uh, clip they show. <laughs> Man, exactly. I don't know what they got going on with these animated drawings. Uh, they did a filthy. <laughs> And like an animal. It all started at a famous dating show. Everyone went there to become famous or for the possibility of appearing on television. But that was not my case. I was young and innocent, and I really thought it was very romantic to meet the love of my life on something as much of a vanity as a reality show. In the game, I had to choose between three men, all interested in dating me. Although I had heard the three voices of my suitors, only one caught my attention. That man was Rodney Alcala, who at the time I only knew as bachelor number one. Although I didn't see his face, the man was charismatic, funny, and seductive. When the show ended and I was asked which contestant I wanted to date, the answer was very clear. I chose the psycho. We saw each other's faces for the first time and he gave me a hug. When we both left the show, we won the strangest prizes from the host. A tennis lesson with an instructor and a day at an amusement park. It wasn't my ideal date, but who knows? It might be fun. I must say you made a great decision, but we both know it was the only one. <laughs> <laughs> what can I say? <laughs> Seeing you, I knew I made a choice. <laughs> this man. <laughs> oh, yeah, that definitely sounded like a serial killer. Man, they the they the uh they the one to match. The guy's like he he pulled a uh, Dave Chappelle. Gotcha. <laughs> the trip, talking about our lives and flirting. We were both very talkative and had a lot of chemistry. It was natural that things flowed so well. What I didn't know was that this was all a facade that would quickly fade away when I asked a question he didn't like. At that moment, we were playing tennis and we decided to take a break and chat while the instructor had to take a call. So, do you mind if I ask what the other contestants were like? Actually, yes, I do mind. At first, I thought it was a joke, but his smile wiped off his face. <laughs> My yeah. comment didn't please him. Hey, sorry, I, I was just... How'd you feel if I made you compete with two other women and a few minutes after I chose you, I told you about them? I'm sorry, I didn't mean to. It's enough that I've lowered myself to compete for another person. But while you're with me, I don't want you to talk to me about any other man. Got it? Yes, I'm sorry. 
I remember feeling very bad at that moment. In a way. I know it sounds crazy, but everything he told me had a strange logic, and for some reason, I believed him. We went back to play tennis again, but something had changed. The atmosphere felt very strange. Rodney was no longer there with his characteristic smile that he had all the way, and the balls he was throwing at me were no longer friendly. Every time he had to serve or return a shot to me, the balls were going with great power toward my body. He would look at the coach and tell that he didn't calculate his strength, but I could see the anger in his eyes every time he served. I knew he was lying. We each showered in our own locker room. As I bathed, I thought about how badly I had behaved with Rodney. Today, it seems ridiculous, but in 1978, things were very different. There were a lot of things that would never happen today. I was finishing my shower when I heard a noise coming from the back so of the locker room. She behaved, man. That's I thought it was another girl getting ready to play, she ain't doing that wrong. but the fact that it was the <laughs> only noise I heard seemed strange. I finished showering and went out with a towel to change. I was curious if that noise was my imagination or if there was a girl, but I definitely wasn't expecting what I saw. Rodney was sitting in his boxers, freshly showered and waiting for me. What the, what the hell? fuck? What are you doing here? I was waiting for my girl while she was taking a bath. Is there a problem? Yeah, we don't even know each other. You can't just show up out of nowhere while I'm changing. Yeah. Were you spying on me? I was just checking the goods. Didn't you just you know, hear me? What the... His smile was erased in an instant. He came up to me and put me against the wall, with one hand against the wall beside my head. Maybe I don't care what you have to say. That's hey, crazy. You're scaring me. <laughs> Good. You should be a little scared. You're talking way too much. Now, say you're sorry. Sorry. I forgive you. Now get ready to go to the amusement park. <laughs> what? Let's get this out of the way before we go to my house for the night. I'll show you how I forgive you by giving you the best night of your life. Bro, what the hell? <laughs> yeah, man. The elevator don't go hey, all the way upstairs. Are you crying? <laughs> Is this a fucking joke? You should be grateful that I put up with all your hysterics. And you have the luxury of crying? What have I done to deserve that? You are so selfish. If you make a fuss, I'm gonna put you in your place, understand? No one will defend you. People hate people like you. Do you understand? What? Yes, I understand. <laughs> Fix that face. I'll wait for you outside. <laughs> And yeah, without further no ado, Rodney left. I could hear him standing in the, it's crazy. At the door, oh, yeah, waiting definitely. for me. The only reason he left was probably that he was afraid someone else would come in. Otherwise, I don't know what he would have done to me. I kept fixing my face to continue with the date, terrified. At that moment, I thought a lot. Was this man really making me think this was my fault? Was my life in danger and I didn't even realize it? Yeah. With a lot of doubts, I got brave. I left the faucet on and escaped out the window, running as far as I could without direction. Eventually, Rodney stuck in my mind as a bad date. I admit that part of me thought I was too extreme, that maybe he was a nice person, but he was nervous. Or maybe I had done something wrong. No. Sometime really? later, watching the news, yourself. I realized how. Yeah, especially we didn't we didn't see how he was acting, gaslighting, talking about fix the face. People hate people like you. Crazy man. Yeah, he definitely trying to put it all on her. Then you say, you think you get the luxury to cry? What? What? That's a that's a master manipulator right there, man. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, right, got to go. Lucky I was to escape that afternoon. A reporter was announcing that Rodney Alcala had been imprisoned for the murder of several women. Okay. He had been prosecuted for the murder of seven women, but was suspected of having killed over a hundred. More than 40 wee. years later, my children show me YouTube videos of me, young and innocent, being tricked and manipulated by a serial killer. Everyone tells me I dodged a bullet by running away, but they're wrong. 
The bullet hit me right in the heart. It took me a long time to stop crying at night, thinking about how that day could have ended. Ah. How I doubted myself and believed the lies of a monster. Today, things have changed, but psychopaths are not extinct. If you're ever in a situation like this, never doubt yourself. And remember, you are not to blame. Hey, she died. She she did dodge a bullet because if she would have went home with him that night, she probably would have been dead. More than likely, man. Over a hundred women. Whew. I don't understand. Like, how could you have? I don't know how you even have like just the 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 the, the heart to just kill. Not only just kill one person, but like a hundred. That joint crazy. Hey man, you definitely got to be somewhere else like that. Yeah. Like I say, you know, a lot of people be trying to uh, be looking at the people that's like who look crazy on the outside. It really be the ones that be acting like they not, yeah. they not crazy yeah. or they just you know what I'm saying they look normal. Nah. Yeah, you're right. Nah, cause the uh, I remember uh, watching like the serial killer documentaries. Those would be the ones that they have just charming, handsome, yeah. just like regular people. Yeah, Psh, definitely not regular. <laughs> definitely not regular. <laughs> God. Go ahead, go ahead and tell everybody what the f you're doing. What the f are you doing? What, what love? I don't know you. Get the f out of here! I don't want to seem self centered, but I am a beautiful woman. Although, that's not necessary to be harassed. Very often, I used to hear anecdotes from my friends about how men had chased them in the street, said nasty phrases to them, and even dared to touch them. That always made me feel somehow lucky since something similar had not happened to me. For a long time, I thought it was because I had just been lucky, but that was not the case. Without realizing it, I had not been harassed because I was always accompanied by a man, my father, my brothers, or my friends. It's sad, isn't it, that a woman is only safe next to a guy, which sooner or later would have to change. That year, I had started my studies in biological sciences, the vast majority of my friends had moved on to other universities, and I still hadn't gotten to know too many of my classmates. So the only person accompanying me back then was Emma, an old friend who was now a nursing student. June, wait for me! We usually ate together. In fact, that afternoon, after class, we decided to go to a cafeteria near the faculty. What are you going to eat? I don't know. Probably a sandwich and a coffee? Ha! <laughs> Sometimes you're too boring to be true. Hey, to check how much money I had, I opened my bag and started looking for my wallet. I don't have enough. When taking out my wallet, suddenly a pink piece of paper fell to the floor. Oh, huh, you dropped something. Without giving me time to react, my friend grabbed the paper, opened it, and began to read it. Oh. Soon, she took her eyes off the paper and turned to look at me mischievously. Uh -uh. Why didn't you tell me? We just started a few weeks ago and look what you've achieved. <laughs> what? what are you talking about, Emma? She extended her hand to me. That's when I grabbed the paper and looked at what was written there. Will you go out on a date with me, June? Was what it said. <laughs> Why do you look so surprised? What on another it. occasion would have been a romantic detail at that moment made me want to vomit since I still had no new friends much less a potential partner. Someone must have snuck that in there. I, yeah. I don't know who did this. Yeah. And it wasn't just that. I had no idea when someone could have put that in my bag. Hey, relax. Maybe they just put it in the wrong bag. It says my name, Emma. Yeah, okay, that's weird. Okay, I'm sorry, but calm down. Look at it this way. This person is too cowardly to talk to you, so they're not going to try again. I looked at the paper for a few seconds while I thought, Either way, what else could I do? If you say so. As the weeks passed, I practically forgot the I don't know if I can do no it. If I'm, like, if I have a book bag or something, and somebody's to slip it in without me knowing it, and that's like a purse, and a woman always got like their purse with it, so if they slip, I don't know, that's, that's going to be like a real red flag in my head. Yeah, cause, I mean, that's too close for comfort. That's, man, that's in your personal space. Yeah. And without, without you even knowing. That's, exactly. Oh yeah, no, you can't, you can't trust that right there. Nah, that's, that's, that's definitely going to be a little alarming. That's going to be off. Good morning, June. During that time, I had met Jared, a classmate. For some reason, I had always found it easier to talk to men than women. So most of my friends were guys. 
I thought the professor would be here by now. Nope, looks like today is your lucky day. <laughs> yeah. You know, you haven't given me your cell number. Do you think you could? Of course. I tore a piece of paper out of my notebook and wrote my cell phone number on it. Here it is. Thanks, June. I'll text you so you can save mine. After that, class started normally. When it finished, Powers I packed that my guy. things and walked toward the exit sure. while putting my oh. cell phone into my bag. That's when I saw them. Two pieces of pink paper were See? there. At that moment, I felt my heart start beating fast. Did you forget, June? And will you go out on a date with me? Were what was written on the papers. Nervously, I crumpled them up and tossed them into the trash can. Soon, I turned around to look at the people present in the class. My eyes moved from side to side in search of whoever was responsible for those papers. But no one was even looking at me. Feeling like I was losing my mind, I crossed the door to leave the class. But I bumped into someone halfway. I'm sorry. <laughs> the man in front of me Ew. had Asian eyes. His hair color was black, and he had a beard that was just beginning to grow. His appearance was quite normal at first glance, but after what? a second, that is his pale skin, the dark circles under his eyes, and above all, the strange way he was looking at me disturbed me. You yeah. like normal a looking about that? Nah, I'm rather like a fish in the face, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, not, bro, if you walk, you go in a, in, a, in a public space, you see somebody looking like that, that's not normal. No, that's face, yeah, his face do look bloated. Yeah, man. <laughs> like a goddamn puffer fish, man. <laughs> you should be. After listening to him, I quickly moved away. Hey, June, are you going to leave without saying goodbye? Uh. Hey, are you feeling all right? Not really. I have to go. Uh, okay. Um, I hope you feel better soon. Thanks, Jareth. When I got home, I felt a little better. I still wasn't sure what to do in that situation, but I knew I had to face that person. Suddenly, I heard my cell phone ring. I had received a message. Answer me, it said. I assumed it was Jareth, so I replied, Hi, I'm sorry I left like that. After a few minutes, another message arrived, but it was from a different cell phone number. Hi June, I'm Jareth. How are you feeling? It said. At that instant, due to the shock, I felt a strong dizziness. You haven't answered me yet, June, was the next message I received. Don't ignore me. Do you want to go out Bro, on a date with weird. me? Man, Terrified, what? the only thing I managed to do was block him. I had no yeah. idea how the stalker had gotten my cell phone number. And in fact, that was precisely what had made me so nervous. What else about me could that person know? Are they following me? Do they know where I live? Yeah. The next day, not only like that, just acting like that definitely ain't gonna get a number. If you were trying to get it, that's one way you definitely not gonna get it. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get you blocked like she did. <laughs> Man, I'm trying to tell you, get shot down every time. Facts. Even though I felt horrible since I hadn't been able to sleep, I decided to go to class, which was in the afternoon. Are you okay, June? Uh, do I look that bad? I didn't say that. Maybe you need to distract yourself. Would you like to go eat something later? Maybe. When the class finished, it was already night. After thinking about it for a bit, I decided to accept Jared's invitation, since maybe he was right. I'll wait for you outside. I walked to the exit of the building and waited for Jared in front of the doors. It was then that a classmate approached me. What game do you think you're playing? <laughs> Excuse me? Why did you block me? Why don't you answer me? It's you. Answer me. <laughs> no, say it. What? Go ahead. Go ahead and tell everybody what you're doing. I'm trying to make love to you. What are you Bro, doing? What? what? I don't even know you. <laughs> Soon, the man began to approach me, and suddenly, he put his hands on my neck. Get out of here. Even though I tried to walk away, he wouldn't let go of me. In I fact, watch. he started to choke me. Nobody gonna go and do not? The next thing I knew was that Jareth had pushed the man away and was beating him up. But I soon passed out. There you go. Today, <laughs> I get beat up like... <laughs> oh, man. Yo, they got to stop with these animations. But I love it, man. Oh, no, it'd be funny. Well, 
recovering from the attack. Mm -mm. Jareth came by a while ago and told me that a man is in police custody. Even if I'm terrified, I'm going to do everything I can to make sure that stalker gets what he deserves. He should, man. That's a nut. Yeah. Come some answer me, answer me, and bro's weird. Man, what? I'm trying to figure out how did he get her number? Unless the dude who he uh, who she gave it to, Jerry, unless he lost the paper or something. I don't know. That's a good. I was kind of thinking that too. How he got the number? Hey, man, tell some answer me. Why aren't you talking to me? Answer talk to me. Like, bro, no, no, <laughs> buddy. That's not for the. Ain't for the happen. What you about to say? Am I saying then slipping the notes in her purse, man? Multiple at that. Oh no, weird. <laughs> Weird, bro. That's like I said. That's definitely not how you're gonna get a woman, bro. For sure. Oh no. That's it. That's the three true first date horror stories anime. Like I said, these these are bangers. I really do enjoy these. Hopefully, y'all enjoy these. Like I said, as well. Look description down below to my cousin channel in the description and maybe in the comments. Okay. Y'all have a great day. All right. Quay Max A.K. Quay. And seat no seat. We out. <laughs>